is look at the parts of a computer. Depending on where you're sitting, most of these parts are on a table or desk uh, around you or in front of you. Of course, you're looking at a monitor, which is like a TV screen, and it acts pretty much just like a TV screen, except, of course, it can have, in addition to moving pictures and, uh, and uh, um, uh, still pictures, it can have text uh, as well that you can type and edit using this thing, the keyboard, which is like a typewriter. And you'll see that the keys are laid out just like a typewriter, but they have some extra keys and some extra things that we'll be going over. Then there's the mouse. The mouse is a what we call a navigation and selection tool. It allows you to uh, move a little cursor onto different things on the screen, and by pressing a button on the mouse to select them or to make something else happen on the screen. It's called a mouse because it's got a little round body with a long tail connecting it to the computer. Although these days, sometimes it's wireless, so there's no tail. Somewhere nearby, either next to the computer, on the floor under the table, or uh, under the computer on top of the table, is a box. It could be vertical like this. It could be on its side, but it's the computer itself. And it's what uh, does all the work, and it has circuit boards, and fans, and storage media, and ways for other devices to be hooked up to it, and ways for transportable storage media to be uh, put in and out of it, such as CDs and, and memory sticks. Uh, you may have a printer nearby, or it may be across the room, uh, but it's what prints the words and pictures that you type on paper. You might have some speakers, uh, which are just like stereo speakers for uh, voice, music, and other sounds. And somewhere there's a modem, there's a device, it may not be visible to you there, but there's some way to connect to the outside world or to a network of some kind. Uh, these days, mostly, it's a connection to the World Wide Web or the Internet. These are all the parts put together. Now, if you, th you can think about the, the monitor, the speaker, and the printer as three different ways to get information out of the computer, uh, by watching, reading, listening, and printing. There's only two ways to get, uh, immediately anyway, information into the computer, and that's the keyboard and the mouse. But the computer is what does the work. We'll start with the keyboard and the mouse. Let's take a look at the keyboard. Uh, the keyboard, thankfully, the main part of it anyway, is laid out pretty much as typewriters have been laid out for well over 100 years now, I suppose, with the QWERTY, Q-W-E-R-T-Y style of keyboard layout standard typewriter layout. That's the bulk of those keys on that keyboard. But there are a lot of other keys here, and so that's what we're going to talk about right now. Uh, go to the upper left. There's an escape key. That's sort of an emergency uh, get it, let's get out of here key. It doesn't always work, but most programs are set up so that if uh, you're in the middle of something and you decide you change your mind, uh, that you can often press that key and kind of get out or uh, out of the thing you're doing and back to another screen where you might be able to um, figure out what to do next better. There's a row of keys called function keys. We're not going to cover them today, but they're uh, numbered F1 through F12. And if you were using, say, a, a computer at a point of sale in a store, you might assign specific functions to those keys, such as add sales tax or something like that. But uh, it's going to be different for every setup, although they do have functions that are pretty handy. It's just for a later, more uh, advanced course. There'll be some specialized keys near the upper right, such as print screen, scroll lock, pause. Uh, we're not going to cover those today either, because they're rarely used. Uh, let's get back to this, uh, the main keyboard, the QWERTY keyboard. Uh, there's a row of, there's numbers along the top, and above those numbers are individual characters, like an at sign, a number sign, a dollar sign. Um, and just like regular old-fashioned typewriters, pressing the shift key, and you'll find shift keys in the lower left and lower right side of the computer or keyboard, um, that those shift keys enable you to make capital letters out of the regular letters of the alphabet. Or if there's two commands on a key, uh, pressing shift will allow you to type the upper command. For instance, if you wanted to type a dollar sign, you would press shift and then press the number four at the very top where the dollar sign is. 
Uh, you've got a tab key, which is very much like uh, an indent key on a typewriter, although it has some more functions. You've got a caps lock key, which works just like the, cap the locking of capitals key on a typewriter. Uh, on the right side, you've got an enter key, which is uh, actually has functions very similar to the carriage return handle on a, an old-fashioned typewriter or the carriage return or return button on an electric typewriter. Upper right, you'll see a backspace key, which allows you to backspace and essentially erase the uh, letters you just typed. Uh, but that's, uh, oh yeah, can't forget the space bar. The large bar in the center near the bottom, uh, at the bottom, is the space bar, and that's for putting spaces between words or characters. There are two other, at least two other keys that I want to tell you about. Uh, you'll look down in the lower left, you'll see a control, CTRL and an alternate ALT key, and you'll usually see them repeated to the, on the right side as well. And those have some special functions that uh, we uh, probably won't get to today, but they, uh, that's about the only, the main difference between that and the standard QWERTY keyboard. Uh, you've also got a, a set of cursor control keys. If you look down, you'll find four arrow keys, up, down, left, and right. Those are used for navigating around the screen, as we'll see. And above that are certain other keys which help you move your cursors or icons around the screen. And most computers have a numerical keyboard, a keypad on the right that looks very much like a calculator or adding machine and acts in pretty much the same way depending on, uh, you can simply type numbers in a document uh, or you can do some other things with those keys as well. Um, the mouse is the other main way you have of telling the computer what to do. Uh, and we'll cover the mouse. As we stated earlier, the mouse is a navigation and selection tool. It with the keyboard is one of the two ways that you tell your computer what to do. The mouse is usually connected with a wire to the computer, although these days wireless mice are becoming more and more common. They work the same way but with a wireless mouse, you just got to make sure you've got it pointed the right direction. When it is pointed the right direction, the side facing the computer or away from you uh, is going to have two buttons, one on the left side, one on the right side. These are usually large spaces, not small buttons, on the mouse. There are more areas than points on the mouse. Many mice in the middle also have something called a scroll wheel, which you can experiment with later. But mostly, the thing you'll do mostly with the mouse is move it around on the table or on a mouse pad and press that button on the left, the left click. You hold the mouse by laying your hand gently over it. The illustration shown here is for a right-handed person. And when a right-handed person lays their hand on the mouse, uh, their index finger falls naturally on this left button area of the mouse. Now, for a left-handed person, uh, it would be, say, the ring finger would fall over the, the left button. But what happens is, when you lay your hand on the mouse, and you move it away from you, toward you, in circles, keeping it straight, that is, keeping the wire side or the button side facing the computer, you can move it around, and it'll move a pointer or cursor on the screen. Uh, that's uh, basically how you use a mouse. Now, as you, uh, you can go ahead now and lay your hand on the mouse and move it around on the screen in front of you. You should be able to see a cursor or a pointer that looks like one of the ones shown on the screen here. Um, but what do you do with a mouse? Well, we're going to find out because next we're going to talk about the desktop. That is the area on the screen that is uh, what you see when you first turn on your computer. The first thing you'll probably notice about the desktop is that the one on the screen in this little presentation doesn't look like the one on your computer. That's because this is customizable. Uh, every computer is going to have a different background picture, different icons placed on the desktop, those little symbols that are around there, program icons usually, or file folders. Uh, there's going to be different icons at the bottom as well. But they're all arranged in pretty much the same way. The big, broad, full-screen desktop area 
will contain program icons and file folders and maybe a few other tools. The notification area in the lower right, uh, you won't mess with that much unless you want to say change the volume of sound on your computer. Uh, there's a few other uses that later on you'll get into. In the middle at the bottom, whatever program you have open at the time will be shown there. Near the left side, the quick launch toolbar, that's customizable as well. Uh, every computer is going to look a little different there, and some of them may have very few or no icons in that area. But every Windows computer does have one thing in common on that desktop, and that is the Start button in the lower left. The Start button is, for most people, exactly what it says, where you start. 